What's going on, everybody? It's Adam Trigger here. And believe it or not, it's college basketball season, at least in a month, uh, about a month from today or when these videos start going out. College Hoop tips off on November 4th. And so we're going to bring back the 30 previews in 30 days like we did last year. Um, they got a ton of positive feedback, so thank you guys for that. Uh, it's going to allow me to do them again this year. And I'll just give you a quick synopsis of, of what to expect. So this is a very unique preview because these are – 30 teams that I went and saw in person last year. So it's going to be across all different conferences. We're going to be all over the place with the teams we talk about. But the one common theme is I've seen them play in person at least once. And they were teams I followed closely last season because of that. And so going into the new season, it gives me a little continuity uh, in, from last year to this year in the ever-changing landscape of, of college athletics, NIL, uh, transfer portal. Uh, it, it really helps me doing these to be prepared for the season. And I hope to help you, you know, I hope to give you um, uh, some play on play against, you know, by the end of each video, I hope you leave with a sense of like what to do with each team. Cause I think that's going to be super helpful um, as you know, we get to November 4th and suddenly there's 363 teams in action and uh, you know, we're, we're off and running. So uh, these are team specific previews. So in this case, we're talking Georgia Bulldogs today. That's going to be our first team of the 30. But I realize it's the only SEC team that I have planned uh, for this preview. So I do want to touch just very briefly on the SEC conference in general and then maybe where Georgia fits into that picture uh, because this conference does deserve some attention. There is probably 10 teams of the 16 that could be in the top 25 to start the season. Now, they all won't be, but there are, are 10 of the 16 teams are that close to being elite teams, which means this conference is absolutely loaded. There's five teams in the SEC that finished in the top 25 last year, Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Auburn, and South Carolina. And I would say Tennessee, Auburn, and Alabama are probably, your, your winner is probably coming from those three. Uh, those three are three of the elite teams in college basketball again this year. But what makes this conference so interesting is that next group, the Arkansas, Texas A&M, Kentucky, Florida, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and even Texas. Yes, Texas, now in the SEC. Um, I mean, there's 10 right there, potential top 25 teams. It's an absolute loaded conference, not just a football conference anymore, guys. SEC has been a basketball conference very much so for a couple of years now, and um, that's going to be the same case again this year now there is a drop off after the top 10 the one team i mentioned from last year that finished in the top five finished in the top 25 that i don't think is anywhere near the top 10 this year is south carolina i see them dropping off but what one of these teams could potentially break up that that sort of powerhouse group in the top 10 and i think that team could potentially be georgia um you know this is a team that i got to see early in the year last year I got to go down to Bahamas with Kelly Stewart, C.T. Betts, Joe Ranieri. We had an aerial. We had a whole crew down at the in the Bahamas to watch the Bahamar Classic. And Georgia was one of the teams that played down there. And one of the things that I think one of our big takeaways just being there is Georgia was out. Their, their players were out to like three in the morning every night. Um, it looked like, you know, of the four teams, they clearly had the most fun. Uh, but I think that's like a really important point to make about like MTE and some of this early season basketball and what makes it so challenging to handicap is, you know, I, I feel like Georgia approached that more as more of a team building exercise that, than actually playing competitive games. Uh, you know, and, and I wonder a little bit if it was Mike White's way of sort of like, you know, giving his players a positive experience in, in a season where they were projected to finish either last or at the bottom of the SEC. Um, you know, I, I remember being being equally sort of low on Georgia going into last season. Uh, their best player, who's no longer with the team, was Noah Thomason. He was a guy that I watched play for years at Niagara on very average Niagara teams. So, you know, I think going into last season, Mike White in his second year at Georgia was really just trying to build a little bit of a, of a culture and – you know, get guys sort of excited to play together. And, and you know, just again, I felt like that trip for Georgia earlier in the year was was team building. 
Uh, but it, but it appeared to work because for me, Georgia far exceeded expectations last year. You know, this is a team that by the end of the year made it to the NIT and made it all the way to the semifinal at Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Um, you know, they were not expected to make a run in that tournament, but they won three games. They knocked off Xavier, Wake Forest, and Ohio State on their way to an NIT semifinal loss to Seton Hall. So, you know, that to me, you know, the the record, when you look at Georgia on paper, Mike White year one to year two, this, of course, will be his third year. Um, it, it looks very similar. Uh, year two was was better record-wise, pretty much because of the NIT run at the end of the season. Uh, but six and twelve in conference play, it, it, you're gonna, you know, you someone looking at that might not think that Georgia really improved from last year to this year. But I think they improved tremendously for a couple of reasons. One, six and twelve in the SEC last year was was more impressive than the year before. That was a tougher SEC. And then two, I, I just think that that run at the end of the year in the NIT, beating other power conference teams, kind of like validated what Mike White is trying to do here and really makes me optimistic about this Georgia team going into year three, which is the upcoming year this year. Now, this is going to be a considerably different team than Georgia had last year, but but it's different in a good way because now Mike White has a little bit of a base and now he's going out and getting some players and he's bringing in some players that you know give them a far better roster on paper, in my opinion, than what they've had in his first two seasons. So Asa Newell is a name that you're probably going to learn quickly. Uh, might be one of the better players when it's all said and done in the entire, in the entire SEC conference, which is saying a lot with, with the star power that's going to be in this league this year. He's a 6'11 freshman, and I'm certain that pre-NIL, pre-portal, this guy does not end up at Georgia. And I, I think you're going to see a team like Georgia benefit from some of this because some of your blue blood top programs that the established sort of college basketball programs now, they're going to the portal and they're going to get guys that are already superstars, that, that have already produced at the D1 level, that are maybe trying to move up and now play at the highest level of D1. And they're passing on the sort of highly touted freshmen with a ton of upside and I think that's Georgia's benefit here um, to, to get a guy like uh, Newell come in and, and potentially, you know, be the best player on the team or, or be a program changing player. You know, that's just not something that that Georgia's had with Mike White last year. Like I said, felt like their best player coming into the year was a transfer from Niagara, you know, that that was on an average team in the MAC conference. And so now to bring in someone like Newell, he's 6'11", he can shoot. He's athletic. He's going to, you know, be a force in the paint, protecting the rim. Um, th this is just a guy that White hasn't really had during his time here, and could be just an instant impact. Like, might make Georgia, a, a, a you know, I'm not going to say a powerhouse, but might make them relevant overnight uh, if he can be sort of as good as advertised. Uh, and the other thing that's really interesting about this Georgia team is. In addition to Newell, there's a lot of size here. And that's huge in a conference like the SEC. All these teams are big. Playing in this league night in, night out, there is freak athletes, especially when you get the upper echelons of this league, like the Alabamas, the Auburns, the Tennessees. I mean, it, it, you're going to get worn down uh, playing you know, these types of teams on a nightly basis. And White has kind of gone out and, and got some, some big dudes to, to you know, put together a, a defense or at least a paint presence that that you know might be able to get them over the hump from a six and twelve SEC team to maybe an SEC team that's closer to five hundred. Um, so Cyril is another six eleven freshman. Uh, again, who knows if they're getting these types of recruits in you know five six seven years ago? But now with these bigger you know more established schools going for the already proven player, you get it. You know you get some of these guys at Georgia that still have an NIL budget. And, and a lot to offer can still offer high level, you know, big time college basketball in the SEC conference. Um, they bring in Justin Absin, who's a junior from Appalachian State. Uh, he's an exciting player because he's a 6'9 forward. Uh, but that Appalachian State team last year was tremendous defensively. 
And, you know, I think that, again, the way I, I sort of look at this Georgia team starting to, to make up the makeup of this Georgia team is height and some, some guys that can play inside, which is not something they've really had, you know, the past couple of years. Uh, another one that comes in is RJ Godfrey from Clemson. He was more of a rotation piece, but again, he's another six, seven, six, eight forward that you start to, to, you know, you see two guys that are six, 11 in athletic, a guy like Godfrey who probably comes off the bench, uh, and, and then absent who was a, you know, 25, 30 minute, a game guy for Appalachian state upperclassmen. Now, um, Georgia might be able to, to defend here a little bit, which again, I, I think you know, gives them tremendous upside comparative to to where I think they're going to be ra- rated. You know, in a lot of these season previews that come out, and where the where the market is going to rate them, which to us as sports betters is you know the most important thing. Um, you know, so it's not by no means like once you get in a conference play with Georgia, I don't think it's going to be easy for them to defend like an Alabama or an Auburn or a Tennessee. Uh, but they are putting together a front court that can at least you know look looks like they might be able to compete athletically and not just get totally, you know, bullied, um, you know, like they have maybe in, in, in previous years. So that's another reason to be excited about this Georgia team. Now, Silas Demery comes back. He's probably the best returning offensive player that Georgia, you know, is going to bring back. Obviously Thomason uh, is one of the, one of the ones that's moved on at this point. Uh, He was a fifth year guy, so they'll lose him. But uh, Silas Demery Jr., It's a sophomore. Last year, he was, you know, uh, one of their better creators, I would say, especially as the season went along. And I I think you'll see the ball in in his hands sort of be the playmaker of this team. But the way he sort of projected last season, I I felt like he kind of got better as the season went on. Uh, So I could see him taking a step forward this year. And then Blue Kane, I, I mean, we walked into the convention center in the Bahamas and it was we were basically right on the court. It was this little ballroom where, I mean, you pretty much were able to walk on the court. Uh, and I know for the Providence Georgia game, Kelly and I sat right on the baseline in, in media row. And I, I couldn't, when I saw blue cane, I was like, this dude's playing today. Like I, I, I couldn't believe he was actually going to step foot on the court and go up against the likes of like Norchad Omir and some of the bigs that like, you know, some of the, the strong guys that Miami had, cause he was so skinny. So he looked, like a fragile, skinny little, you know, stick figure. And, um, you know, but but the kid can absolutely shoot it. And he was a freshman last year. And, and so I think with a, you know, I'll be really interested to see with an off season of like weight training, if he put on any any weight last year to this year, because if this guy can, can hold his own in the physicality department at all, um, he could just be a lights out scorer for this Georgia team. Um, you know, specifically on the perimeter, he's a tremendous shooter and, you know, he, he's someone that I expect to start this year. He came off the bench for Georgia last year. Uh, but when, you know, at times he would come in and he, and he could, you know, he'll give you four quick threes. I mean, that's kind of his game. So really interesting piece right there. Uh, because again, he's now, he now will have an entire year of, you know, off season with, you know, weight training, so on and so forth. And and I wouldn't be surprised if he took a step forward and and became a more productive player this year. Uh, Tyron Lawrence transfers from Vanderbilt. I think, uh, you know, what you see is what you get probably with him. He's an upperclassman, 13.8 points per game last year. Um, You know, I, I, again, like, uh, you know, they've seen, we know what he can do in this conference at this point. So, you know, I think that he could be just a a nice addition to the team. Uh, But what I'm really interested to see is is the fact that Mike White Mike White went back to the MAC conference to to get two guys that I've really you know followed over the course of their career, being a Siena College alum and someone that watches the MAC very closely. Um, it was really interesting to see him go to Mount St. Mary's and not get not one but two of their guards, basically grab their whole backcourt, uh, and he's going to bring them in as bench pieces this year, which is super interesting to me because these two could really play in the Mac and um, I'll be interested to see how productive they can be, you know, taking the step up, up, up and going to, to a sec program and uh, playing for a team like Georgia. So you've got Dakota Lafue uh, and Deshane Montgomery and Lafue is like, 
you know, in the Mac, he was a point guard, but also a scorer, 17, 18 points a game, pretty much just made plays all over the, all over the floor. I don't know if he'll do that come SEC play. I don't know if he's got the, the size really to do that. But um, one thing this Georgia team might lack is a true point guard, and, and it's possible that he could step in, you know, into that role. Uh, I've always just loved the way this kid has played, plays extremely hard, very sort of creative player. So, again, someone that I think has upside, and I can understand why, you know, White would would have wanted him. But Montgomery, in my opinion, was the best player on that Mount St. Mary's team last year. And, and he looks like a guy that could step in and, and, and potentially play in the SEC. Um, so, again, I think they'll both come off of the bench here, but you're, you're talking two more really, you know, kind of like solid options. And, and that's what I keep coming back to is, is suddenly this has gone from a, a team that was kind of reliant on Thomason to create something and, you know, just was a little bit helter skelter, some youth. And, you know, like I said, last year, Kane could come in every once in a while, shoot the three. Um, Demery sort of emerged as a, as a good option as the season went on. But but now suddenly they've got, you know, I would say seven, eight, nine guys that can actually play on this roster. And, you know, White does get criticized. I don't think Mike White's my favorite coach by any means. And he takes a share of criticism um, for, for lack of, like, big wins. But this guy has won a lot of basketball games. You know, he never got to the tournament at Louisiana Tech, but he was 101-40 and 40 during his time there. Um, I think he made it to an elite eight with Florida early in his, his tenure there and then kind of got bounced in the tournament first weekend every year after that. But still, 148 and 88 during his time in Florida. The guys won a lot of basketball games. And I wouldn't be surprised, you know, two years at Georgia, just 36 and 33. But this was like not a great Georgia team that he, that he inherited. And he's in a conference that's very difficult to win if you're at the bottom of this conference now, you know, go back to the beginning of our preview. I, I talked about 10 teams of the 16 that very well could be, you know, top 25 teams within the first week or two of the season. So if you're not one of those 10, like Georgia isn't, that's tough sledding right there. But, you know, I, I think White might have the, the players this year to potentially, you know, get into that top 10 in the conference and, and make a little bit of noise. So, at the end of each preview, uh, we're going to do a betting perspective, and we're going to give a team thumbs up or thumbs down, play on or play against. And, and so now it's that time to do that with Georgia. And I think Georgia's going to get a thumbs up for me. This is a team I'm going to look to bet on this year for a couple of reasons. The first reason is, you know, I, I do think the sheer quality of the SEC might be tough for them from a win-loss perspective. Um, but... They are going to be a, a, an underdog come conference play quite frequently. And, and I think regardless of what happens in the first two months of the season, you know, this might be a team come conference play that's a very good number, a very good play against the number. And, and that's kind of how I'll look to approach them. Now, in the non-conference, their schedule is very favorable. And I would not be surprised to see this team get off to a hot start. Um, I, I really sort of like how this sets up for Georgia. Like, I don't know if we'll have an opportunity to really like bet them in those first three games because they're all home games against like, you know, cupcake type teams, Tennessee Tech, Texas Southern, North Florida. Uh, but I fully expect them to win all three of those. And, and I'll, I'll look to see if I can lay a number with them at some point in those in, in those three games. The game I kind of have circled November 15th, uh, it'll be at Georgia Tech. So probably playable spot for Georgia in that game from a numbers perspective. Uh, and again, like, you know, that, that game is a couple hours away in Atlanta. Georgia Tech is, is not a team that I really fear this year. Like, at, you know, that that would be like a bad matchup for them. That's a rivalry game. Uh, so I think that could be a, a spot potentially to play on Georgia. And then, they're going back to the Bahamas. It looks like they're going to Atlantis. So they're going to be on the other side of the island this year um, in that in that other Atlantis tournament. But that'll be an interesting sort of test for them because they get Marquette and they get St. John's, who are two really strong teams out of the Big East. But my guess is Mike White 
is a little bit more businesslike in, in in his trip to the Bahamas this year. I, I think last year was okay. You had a good time. We were still kind of like, you know, just building a team a little bit. I think this year in year three for white, it's going to be more business. And I think Georgia is going to approach that tournament um, in the Bahamas and try to win a game this year. Cause last year, you know, they didn't play horribly, but they still lost to Providence and, um, and Miami and they didn't cover either of those games, but I think you'll get a more business like approach to that MTE in the Bahamas this year. Uh, and then sec ACC challenge comes up on December 3rd. That's a home game against Notre Dame. Another another team I don't really think is a, a bad matchup for them or is it a game they can't win. So that's another spot to potentially look at Georgia. And then a neutral site game against Grand Canyon at State Farm Arena in Atlanta. And, and you know Grand Canyon's going to get their, their share of love after the season they had last year. So I actually think the non-conference is pretty favorable for Georgia. Aside from that trip to the Bahamas, they never leave the state of Georgia. They never even really leave the Atlanta Athens area at all. And then it's, you know, it's then it's right into conference play. So I will look for my spots to play Georgia, you know, all, all things equal. If this is, you know, barring injury, I'm definitely looking to bet on this team. And I think if they stay healthy, they could be a beast against the number, uh, you know, come conference play. Cause I think they will be very underrated relative to, you know, the other teams in that league. So I'll give Georgia a thumbs up. I think Georgia is a team to play on, to keep an eye on this year. I think they could potentially overachieve, and, and that's how, be, how I will be trying to bet the Georgia Bulldogs going into the 2024-2025 season. If you're interested in what I have to, to bet all season, head on over to Wager Talk and check out that special on your page right now. Uh, it's my entire college basketball season. For an insanely low rate, I can promise you, that they will not offer it at that low rate uh, once the season starts. Uh, so only three ninety five. dollars Coupon code TRIG, T-R-I-G-C-V-B. Um, last two seasons, uh, I, I think I've hit close to 54%. I'm up over 40 units. I should probably have that in front of me right now. Uh, up close to 50 units. I think it's like 48.9 across the last two seasons. Um, so we're going to try to make it a, a, a third season in a row where we can net, you know, positive units and, and keep that run going. And you can find that at my page, wt.buzz slash AT. Uh, this was the Georgia Bulldogs preview. We will be back with 30 of these throughout the month of November. Um, so give me a follow at, uh, you know, on all social media platforms at Adam Trigger WT. And also check out that Wager Talk YouTube channel where you can watch these, uh, you know, watch for a new one each day as we lead up to tip off on November 4th.